three simple tips to boost your metabolism after 40. Now, if you're anything like me, I certainly found that once I got over 40, definitely into my 50s, managing my weight became more of a challenge. In my 20s and 30s, didn't give it a second thought, but now I'm in my 50s, it's definitely more of a challenge. And it's the same for the clients I've been working with over the last decade now. Now, why is it more of a challenge to lose weight, manage weight, stay in shape after the age of 40, into your 50s and 60s and beyond? Simply because physiologically, our metabolism naturally slows down unless we take some corrective action to be able to reverse that and turn that around. And we can definitely do that with the three practical tips I'm about to share with you now. Now, if you don't know who I am, my name's Eric Simpson. I'm an online weight loss specialist. And if you haven't been to this channel before, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you can be notified when I release my video. So let's dive into these three practical tips I'm gonna share with you today that I believe can help you to quite literally transform the way you look, feel, and move. So tip number one is to consume enough protein. When I work with clients, typically I find that their carbohydrate levels are high, their fat levels are high, and the protein intake is very, very low. You know, most people will think just by eating one piece of chicken, a chicken breast, let's say, for lunch is gonna be adequate protein intake. It really isn't. So let's just use as an example uh, to work out how much protein you should be eating. 140 pounds is your target body weight. That's 10 stone. So if 140 pounds were your target body weight, you want to be consuming one gram of protein per pound of your target body weight. So whatever your target body weight is, you need to be consuming one gram of protein per that target weight. So 140 grams per day. Typically that would be spread over three meals, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, or two meals if you're a two meal a day kind of person. So that's tip number one. Tip number two is resistance training. Now, the women I've worked with in the past, when they came to me, they were quite fearful of weight training for a number of reasons, but one of the big reasons was this myth that if you do weight training, you're gonna become big and muscular. That's simply not going to happen unless you're taking excessive amounts of some sort of injected substance like testosterone and you're pushing incredibly heavy weights, it really isn't gonna happen for you. But in terms of how hard should you be working with your weight training and how often, let's talk about the intensity levels and how hard you should be working. One of the mistakes I see women making with weight training is when they're doing weights, they're using really, really light weights, which are fine when you're starting out. You know, when you want to learn the technique, the form, making sure you're not going to injure yourself, that makes perfect sense. But then you need to move that on to a level whereby, let's say you're doing 10 repetitions of an exercise where you're pushing a weight off your chest. You want to be able to feel as though when you get to repetitions number eight, nine, and 10, that if I were to say to you, do another two or three repetitions, you'd say, I can probably just about squeeze those out. You don't want to be getting to reps number eight, nine, and 10 and thinking, oh, I could do 10 more easily. So you need to make sure you're challenging yourself. And I've put a link in the description below to my beginner six appeal workout, which you can access today. And that will just guide you through a simple workout you can do at home, minimal equipment, minimal space, and minimal time. And I actually have a client in there called Marie, who you can see her at the start of her workout, and then you can see her uh, at the end where she's lost the weight and you can see the routine that she started off with. So that's in the description below. In terms of how many resistance sessions you should be doing a week, you should be aiming for at least three resistance sessions per week. So let's say for example, Monday, uh, Wednesday, Friday, or Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, but you wanna give yourself a bit of a, a gap in between the sessions so your body can rest, recover, before you go at it again. And the third tip I'd like to give you is one you've probably heard before, and that's making sure you're getting enough sleep, it's typically seven to eight hours a day. Now, I could talk about all the hormonal issues that are affected when you lack sleep, I'm not gonna go into that today, but what I would just say is this, if you are lacking sleep, it's gonna do two major things, in my opinion, that will affect your ability to implement tips number one and two. Number one, it's going to mean you'll make poor decisions. When we're tired, we all make poor decisions. It's just one of those things, you know, we, we can't think straight. And number two, you're gonna lack the energy to do the resistance training sessions. You know, if you're getting a poor night's sleep, how on earth do you expect to get up, do a day's work, and then do weight training, or do weight training first thing, and then do a day's work? It's just gonna unravel very, very quickly. So those are the three tips. Get your protein levels up, do your resistance training sessions, and make sure you're getting enough sleep on a daily basis. And if you want access to some free resources, I've put the links in the description. There's one link to some high protein meals, which you can access today. It shows you what to eat, the calorie intake, the, the nutritional values, 
shopping list, there's everything in there, nice colour pictures. And then there's a workout routine, the Six Appeal workout, where I have a client that goes from beginner right the way through to more of an advanced level using basic exercises. So you can access that in the description below. Hopefully you found that of some value. And if you have found it of value, feel free to like, share, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, so that you can be notified when I release my next video. Until then, take good care and bye for now.